Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Now, this may continue on for quite some time. However, what we want to be aware of is that, of course, a downtrend or the start of a downtrend always begins with a lower high and then followed up by a lower low. So in this case, we go back to the previous peak, or sorry, previous trough, and we can establish that as a benchmark low. So in other words, if we've been trading this particular security from way down here, as we continue to make uh, um, higher highs and higher lows, then we could follow the market up to a certain level. But as we begin to make a lower high, we then have to go back to this previous, uh, what we call a pivot point or a, a previous trough and use that as a benchmark because a break below that will suggest that the market is reversing and high probability it's going to continue down to retest some of these previous troughs that have been established uh, um, uh, in the trading activity uh, days and weeks beforehand. So let's take a look at the YUK here, which is the U.S. dollar versus the Japanese yen. And, of course, no surprise that uh, the U.S. dollar has certainly been, been uh, losing strength against the yen. The yen has been gaining strength against the, uh, against the, uh, the U.S. dollar. Now, this is just a snapshot of the, uh, of the YUK as of last night. But what I want to uh, draw everybody's attention to is that we have a series of of little peaks here as the market has been trading, uh, as the uh, pair value has been trading to the downside, which help us establish a possible trend line. And so although we've had positive days, we've had negative days, we can essentially establish that, that the YUK has been on a downtrend. And if we're looking for a change in direction, okay, the first possible sign of that change in direction is a break of the trend line. Now, that's one way to look at the possibility of a, uh, of a market reversal. But we like to take it uh, a little further, and we like to look at, at um, those previous pivots or previous peaks as, as the benchmark. So provided that we don't break this high here, we have to be aware that the possibility for the market to continue to the downside or the pair value to, co to continue to the downside is a very distinct possibility. All right? um, with a break above that, we can now step back and look at this and say with a reasonable uh, uh, amount of probability, we should, with a break above that, see some sort of a moderate move to the upside. Now, again, that's not always guaranteed, but what we're looking at is we're trying to put a few pieces of information together to, uh, to distinguish a high probable trade opportunity. Now, that being said, we would then have to go back and use this level down here, hopefully everybody can see this, as a benchmark as well, because remember, a downtrend makes lower lows and lower highs. As we begin to break that trend line, and break this pivot point here, we're now beginning to make a higher high, but we have to go back to this previous low and look at that and, and say, okay, but if I get in up, in here, up here and we see a very quick reversal, as soon as we break this pivot point, high probability it's going to keep going to the downside. And so although we're entering with a particular directional bias, we're still keeping an open mind, focusing on the basics and recognizing that, that uh, an uptrend makes higher highs. As soon as we reverse off of that higher high, recognize a downtrend makes lower lows and uh, lower highs, this is where we have to make the decision to get out. I see there's a couple of questions coming through, so I'll just, um, I'll just answer. Uh, uh, John had a question just uh, whether or not theta uh, applies. Well, theta 
is uh, essentially just talking about the options expiration or the expiration date, which I believe I included uh, in the influencing uh, variables on an option contract's price. So yes, of course, theta applies. There's no question about it. Um, but what I really want to draw your attention to is that you're not going to go in and just simply uh, buy a uh, uh, an option contract based on the amount of time left to uh, to uh, expiration, which is essentially what the theta refers to, you're going to go in and buy an option contract based on your outlook on the pair value. And that, I believe, anyways, is where it, uh, where it needs to start. Now, another question, um, European-style exercise is only traded on the day of expiration with stock options. Um, European-style exercise simply means that the underlying security, um, you, the, you cannot exercise early or be assigned early on the underlying security. Since the, the options uh, for FX options are based on a, a, an, a notional index or, a, or an index that does not have uh, shares trading on it, uh, they're, actually, uh, they're actually cash settled. So although you can buy and sell those options uh, at any point from the time you've purchased them until expiration, uh, you're not going to exercise your right to receive X number of dollars in Japanese yen, so to speak, uh, uh, prior to uh, expiration because you see there's some sort of financial benefit. Um, there is no uh, underlying, it's cash settled uh, and, um, and, uh, and will not be settled automatically until the, uh, the final date of, uh, of expiration. So hopefully that uh, answers uh, your question to a certain extent. The uh, most U.S.-based uh, equities are, in fact, American-style exercise. So moving on here, we've established essentially uh, uh, a trend line and how we determine that. I've used the previous pivot point as a benchmark to enter a possible trade. Well, one other way that we can look at these previous pivot points or previous peaks and troughs is by establishing, establishing support and resistance levels. And so what you'll notice here, just to draw your attention, is that um, where we have a little bit of a resistance level here, as we call it, we have a key support level right in here. So this becomes a very important uh, range for our, our uh, pair value right now. And so one would believe that as we break back up above this range, we should see a continuation to the upside. We can establish some near-term targets. I'll draw your attention to this low here, and if I extend that all the way across, you'll see that we actually saw the pair value come up and retest that based on this previous uh, uh, bottom here. So we can establish this level as an appropriate target should the, uh, the, the um, U.S. dollar begin to uh, strengthen against the yen or the YUK begins to move upside, we can establish some near-term targets based on these previous, previous levels. So let's talk about the concept of support and resistance because really that lays the foundation, lays down the foundation for any trade uh, entry uh, uh, opportunity or exit that, uh, that we take, regardless of whether it's FX options, regardless of whether it's futures or, or equities. Support and resistance is a, is a very important uh, um, uh, characteristic to be able to identify in a price chart. And quite simply, support and resistance reflect strength and weakness at certain price levels. I always like to look at the, uh, the markets as you know, an epic battle between bulls and bears. And you know, at certain points on the battlefield, um, you know, one of the sides decides to dig in. And that's where you see, in, in the case of dealing with you know, uh, um, the, the, our pair values here, that's where you'll see a lot of price action trading within that specific range. Well, we look at that and we can say, okay, well, depending on which side wins, right? Once, once the uh, once the battle for that price level is uh, is uh, finished, we generally believe or we generally see a pretty significant follow through. So, in other words, if you're on the battlefield and you fought for three days to break through a wall, once you've broken through that wall, you're not just going to sit there 
and, uh, and, and wait another three days, you're going to try to move as far through that wall as possible. And so these support and resistance levels act as those, those walls. And when you see those battles taking place as a break to one side or the other happens, we generally look for a more robust follow through in that particular direction. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.